Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be looking at this bad boy. This is the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom Grab and Growl Indoraptor. So basically this is the this is just the Indoraptor version of the Thrash and Throw T-Rex that came out um earlier in the year to coincide with the film release. This one came out not that long ago. Um more towards the end of 2018 uh, but I couldn't get it back then I was unable to purchase it so I managed to get it this time in the January sales and this guy is cool just look how shiny he is all right we'll go over the details first and then I'll go over articulation and the gimmick now I don't know how well my camera is going to pick all of this up because of how shiny he is but oh well so if we're looking at the head the head sculpt is awesome. This has definitely got a better head sculpt than the uh, original Indoraptor that was released, the superposable one. I do have that down here with me, so I'll do a comparison of both Indoraptors uh, at the end of the video. You can see, you can't really see his eyes, but that's because the eyes light up in this one. So at the moment, it's just kind of, we've got soulless eyes. And then you've got the red streak just coming off the eye there. Oh, so we've still got the gold stripe running down the body, finishing about here. Up and down to the arms. Unfortunately, mine is a little bit of a defect when it comes to the arms, but I'm not fussed. And down to the legs. The legs are pretty much the exact same as the superposable one. And the tail. The tail is super long. This tail is longer than the superposable's tail. And um, it's got the brick for a joint there, but it's not actually jointed. The tail is just one solid thing, and that's to aid with the um, the gimmick. Also, we've got the the little spiny feathers on its back and the back of its head, and we've got like the bigger scales. They all sort of look like armor scales running down the the length of its back. Its feet are really nice. There is the DNA code for this guy if you want it. This does unlock this one does unlock a different Indoraptor to the superposable. So if you're wanting to hundred percent that um that app, then definitely scan both Indoraptors. Except with the new Dino Rivals line, they've released another Indoraptor for it. Which is literally just a repackage of the superposable one. It's exactly the same. So I don't know why they did it. It's just pointless. A lot of the figures, a lot of the bigger figures in the Dino Rivals line are literally just repackages of ones we've got already. So they're a bit pointless. In terms of the really big figures, the only one that I can think of that is brand new is the Bite and Fight T-Rex. Other than that, I mean, the Indoraptor's a repackage, the Mosasaurus is a repackage. And the Super Colossal T-Rex is a repackage. So they, they just basically just wanting the collectors to spend all their money, basically. And we'll go underneath, we've got the speaker, because this one makes noises. Makes lots of nice noises. Battery compartment is there, which is quite nice, because when you hold the tail, you know, you're, you're hiding the battery compartment, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, then we have it from the front. On the other side. But yeah, that's all we can talk about when we're looking at it. So we'll go over a bit of the articulation and then I will just show you the gimmick. So the mouth opens and closes, but that is part of the gimmick, which is why the mouth is always shut. Although mine sometimes has quite a snug fit with the mouth, so I can actually have it with the mouth closed. The head is on a ball joint, so you can do that. This is not part of the gimmick, so... Yeah, this is not part of the gimmick, but I wouldn't recommend you doing that too much because there are wires in here to go with the head. Uh, this bit of the neck is part of the gimmick, so is that bit of the body. Uh, the arms can... Yeah, the arms can rotate at the shoulder, but not much. Probably like one click forward and back. The elbows... I don't know if you can see that. I'll try this one. The elbows do have 
the joint there to be able to do you know the, the elbow movement but on mine and an awful lot of these the elbow joint is too stiff and a lot of them have snapped through trying to be moved so I'm not going to move mine just because mine is the really stiff one that it's stuck I'm gonna might try and put a hairdryer to it at some point to try and soften the joint so at the moment my indoractor's arms are stuck straight like this but I'm not bothered um, the wrist you can move the wrist you can also rotate the wrist and then the in and out is the gimmick so let's leave that the legs the legs are exactly the same as the superposable Indoraptors, so they can go forward and back, they can do the slight in and out, you've got the knee, and the ankle. The feet can't rotate, even though it does have that break there that kind of suggests the feet can rotate, like they can in all the other dinosaurs. With the tail, you've got that ball joint there but once again that is for the gimmick that is not really articulation and that's it so that is it for articulation if you get a good one that has the elbows then this guy pretty much has the exact same articulation as the superposable one which i think is another reason why i'm not wanting mine to be why I'm not fussed about mine having the elbow joints because I don't want it to be literally just an electronic version of the superposable. But oh well, and mine now looks kind of drunk. I need to sort the leg out a minute. Oh well, it shall just look perpetually drunk. Now then, for the gimmick, like the thrash and throw, you can control it with the tail. So you can go up and down, side to side. With this one, you can also twist it a little bit. So you can try and get a bit more realistic motion. And that obviously doesn't have any electronics in it. There's no swingy noises like it's thrashing its head around with a thrash and throw. This is literally just a movement, no electronics. The electronics come from this little switch here and this little button here. With the switch, when you push that back, the I believe this is the one that controls the arms, and it will also make noises and the eyes will light up, so click in the switch. Yeah. So that is the grab bit, grab motion. So if you say if you move the arms so they move the hands even so they're like that. It can actually pick things up. Like I'll try, I'll grab one of these figures. These are the size comparison ones. So it can pick things up and has quite a nice grip. Not the strongest grip. It does have a better grip with the mouth than the hands. So I'll just put that back to normal. I'll just Try and get it so it's stood as normal. There we go. And then the little button underneath, so this little button here, controls the mouth and the roars. So yeah, it just makes lots of different noises. I think the cool noises. Yeah. And like I said, this one has a much better grip with the mouth. There we go. Yeah, you can pick things up with its mouth as well. So that is that. That's pretty much all it can do. It is a really awesome figure. Just a shame about the arms being really stiff, but it, yeah, it works. If I just put that hand down, there we go. It looks relatively normal there. 
So before we bring in the, the rest of the size comparison fingers, we'll just quickly bring in the superposable indoor raptor for a size comparison. As you can see, the grab and growl is bigger. The head, the head is a lot bigger. This is the superposable. Overall, it is a lot. It is a bit longer, not a lot, but a bit longer. And a hell of a lot shinier. I mean, look how look how shiny that is compared to this one. I mean, don't get me wrong. This superposable is shiny. But this is a lot shinier. So yeah, I'll just get superposable out of the way. And then we will get on to the actual size comparisons. So if I put you center stage. So here is the Indoraptor with the World of Nintendo Fox McCloud figure. I quite like that scale. Here he is with uh, Funtime Foxy from Funko's sister location toy line. And of course here he is with Figma Kuritsugu. This is probably a bit more of a realistic scale. Either it's either going. Oops! There, there goes Foxy's head. I apologise for that. Foxy is a little drunk and keeps losing his head. Yeah. I'm thinking in either Foxy or Kuritsugu is the more realistic scale, and then that may be for Maisie, I don't know. But yeah, one of these two is probably the more realistic scale. I'm probably actually going to think uh, Foxy is the more realistic scale now I see them both together. Well, when I say realistic, I mean more screen accurate scale, because obviously we can't have realistic because the Indoraptor is a made-up dinosaur. So there, there we go. Uh, I can highly recommend this figure. It's so much fun just doing the whole, you know, the the grabbing and the growling, I guess. Yeah, it's just, it's a ton of fun to play with. Um, this is definitely in the running for my top 10 toys of 2019. I know the year has only just started, but we got to start pretty much straight away. So yeah, this is definitely going to be in the running for the top 10 if i don't get that many cool things this year this will definitely be on the list as well so there we have it that is my review of the jurassic world fallen kingdom grab and growl indoraptor by mattel hands down mattel is doing an amazing job compared to what hasbro gave us for the original jurassic world film back in 2015. so thank you very much for watching guys and i shall see you all in the next video whatever that will be Bye.